Good, good afternoon, dear, good morning, dear colleagues. So, welcome to our weekly microwave seminar. So, uh, today we have a speaker from Korea, Dr. Sang Bae Yoon, who will be talking about material based uh, telescope. So, Sung Woo, please, you may start yes. share the okay. screen. Let me, let me share the screen. Okay, everything is okay. Okay, yes, uh, so full screen. All right. Excellent. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the organizer uh, for, for inviting me for this, you know, exciting time. Uh, and then um, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased to be, uh, to be with you, even though it is online, uh, to talk about our exciting stuff, you know, actual dark mirror. Okay. So today, uh, I particularly uh, talk about the, the tunable dielectric uh, haloscope, which was recently uh, proposed by a CAP pit in, in, in South Korea uh, for high mass action searches. Okay, let me change this thing. Okay. All right. So, okay. Uh, this is the outline of my talk. So I'm going to spend a good fraction of time to you know, talking about the, the basic stuff, the dark matter, what is dark matter, and then what is strong CP problem, and then how does it you know, actually solve this, this issue, and then what is the, the basic uh, principle for, for the detection of the actual dark matter. And basically, this is for students. Uh, I, I prepared for some slides for, for students. And then I'm going to spend time, you know, for you know, you know, to talk about the, the search strategy, particularly, you know, haloscope, which turned out to be the you know, most sensitive searches in, in particularly micro uh, microwave range. And then I'm going to start, you know, in talking about in you know, the high frequency approaches. I'm going to introduce you some some ideas in there. And then rest of the time, I'm going to spend, you know, our design in a tunnel of direct cavity, and then. I probably explained this basic concept, and then we did some, you know, nice in this, uh, simulation study. Even we made uh, some some prototype cavity for for demonstration, and then I have to summarize my talk. All right, so let me start with this pie chart. Uh, uh, this is the you know the energy budget for our universe, which uh, you must be very familiar with. This is for for students by the way. So, okay, current, uh, current scientific uh, knowledge tells us that 70% uh, uh, of the energy in the universe is responsible for expansion of the, our, our, uh, our, our universe. And then a uh, large fraction of the, you know, the remaining part, 30% of the things is, is a matter, we know there, okay? And then uh, more than 80% is, is basically, you know, so there is some, some matter which you cannot see, which is, you know, that's why we call it dark mirror. And then less than 5%, you know, uh, this is we can basically see, smell, and feel those things that are using our five senses. And then uh, standard model, you know, which has been developed in the last, last several decades, you know, extremely well described uh, these 5% issues in energy budgeting in our universe. And then this, this, this bottle basically represented, you know, our human beings and knowledge uh, about the, you know, uh, this, our, our universe, uh, which you can see uh, when you go up to the, you know, you know, observatory floor of the Wilson uh, building at, when, when, you, when you have a chance to visit the Fermi lab, okay? Okay, so dark matter, matter is all about the gravity, okay? So, so here is some, some history about the gravity and the dark matter. Okay, in uh, 17th century, Isaac Newton basically realized that the falling falling apples from the tree share the same types of force uh, with the with the planets in you know, orbiting around the sun. Okay, the, this guy is, was first at, at those, those things, and then has been accepted for many many centuries. And then only twenty centuries, you know, Einstein came up with a very nice, very interesting interpretation of the gravity. Gravity basically distorts you know space time around the mass. And then basically, uh, <clears throat> his, his uh, uh, general relativity was confirmed uh, by the observation of the you know, gravitational wave you know, several years ago uh, by LIGO and Burgers, uh, you know, in collaborations. And in the 1930s, you know, this interesting uh, this guy, uh, the Trichy, 
uh, basically looking at the, in the particular, you know, uh, the, the galaxy cluster, is coma cluster, and then basically he's looked at the, the, the orbital motion of the old uh, clusters is moving around, and then he realized that there must be hidden uh, hidden mass uh, because then the movement is so fast, which cannot be explained by the visible visible matters. And then at the time he used the first time the dark the word dark matter for the first time. And then at the time he assumed, you know he roughly calculated that the population of the dark matter is hundred times larger than larger than visible matter. And then 1970s, you know, you know, this the nice American women, uh, woman uh, scientist Vera Lubin, uh, looking at the hundreds of you know, you know stars, you know, in a, in, a, in a particular the galaxies, and then basically uh, he measured the orbital motion, or the velocity of the, of the individual uh, stars, and then uh, basically what we it's, what he observed is is very different than what uh, what uh, has been expected from the uh, from the uh, Isaac Newton's, you know, uh, dynamics. Uh, that's why this is the, you know, the, uh, be, this, 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 this was the first, uh, first strong evidence that uh, there must be, you know, that dark matter uh, we are looking for currently. Okay, so there are some other, uh, some other uh, evidence for dark matter, of course, all right? So uh, this is the, okay, as I mentioned, you know, the, the galactic uh, rotation of velocity is very different from our, our ex uh, expectation. The left side is basically these these two things that have all the simulation. The, you know, the left side is we introduce the additional mass uh, around the galaxy. Okay, and that's why is is more you know more described uh, our our universe, our galaxies than than the other one. And then another one is gravitational landing effect, and this was also predicted by the uh, general uh, relativity by. Uh, um, Einstein, and then recently we have a bunch of this kind of the collector landing images, uh, which is supported the, the existence of the dark matter. And then finally, the, this is a few years ago, okay, NASA also observed that several events of the colliding uh, the galaxies, and the, basically uh, the different colors represented, you know, you know the the mass distribution around the around the around the galaxy. Uh, before and after the collision, and then this is another another very strong uh, candid, uh, can, uh, evidence uh, for the for the existence of dark uh, dark matter. Okay, so what do we know about the dark matter for now? Okay, so it is dark. Uh, it means that this is the uh, it's not uh, observe or, or nor emit light, meaning that it doesn't interact with the normal matter. It has mass, okay. This, that's why it's called mass, okay. So uh, that's why this is, you know, it has to be uh, experienced by the gravitational pull, and then uh, we believe that this is this plays a uh, vital lures of formation of the galaxy on in in all the universe, okay. And then it has to be uh, stable, uh, otherwise you know you cannot form any in, in dark matter uh, signatures. Uh, so it has to be stable, which means you know it, it has to be stable from the beginning uh, of the universe, okay. And then critical thing is you know uh, it has to everywhere in the universe. It permeates the universe, in particular in the galaxy, which means that we can detect it is anywhere, even in Earth. Uh, that's why you know nowadays the experiment is just focusing on 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 this business. Okay. Uh, there are two major uh, candidates for, for dark matter, as you as you well know. You know there's a wimp, and then they will have an action on the other side. Okay, first the, the wimp. Uh, is, the name of the wimp was first used in, in 1985, and then it was introduced to simply explain the dark matter itself. And then later, it turns out that he has a very natural connection to the the Suji, the particle, which is called uh, this wimp miracle. Uh, there has been, you know, a decades of you know, you know experiment and effort to to look for, you know, wind signal, uh, but there's no, you know, evidence has been claimed so far. Uh, nonetheless, you know, you know, the experiment and effort is still going on. The mass is, uh, you know, heavier than uh, a photon mass. Uh, that's why this is it, it must be behave like you know point like particle, and then detection is basically based on the bouncing off in atomic nuclei. So basically, you measure recoil energy uh, from from the detector. 
on the other side, you know, the action was proposed to, uh, initially to uh, to resolve the you know so-called strong TP problem, which I you know, explained the next slide in 1977, and later on, you know, looking at his his prop uh, is his property is this is good enough to explain the the dark matter itself. You know, that's why you know, I call this is a dark, uh, action action miracle. Uh, there are in you know, a few models around here. You know, I uh, explain a little bit more about this later. And then the mass is, is very, very smaller than the proton mass, uh, such that uh, you, you just uh, like the behavior a coherent wave uh, like this. Okay, so we believe that uh, the action, if if it, it exists, uh, it is it, supposed to be turning to the uh, photon under the large, you know, background of the you know, magnetic field. I will explain more about this later. Okay, so what is a strong CP problem? Okay, the QCD, which is the, you know, a strong interaction theory, basically uh, uh, the, you know, very strange complicated vacuum structure, which is supposed to be naturally supposed to be some additional term, which is called, you know, theta term over there, let me change that one, this formula. Okay, uh, this is non-perturbative, and this is supposed to be naturally violate the CP symmetries in strong interactions. Unfortunately, uh, this term has not been, uh, is, is, is not uh, predictable by theory. It, it must be measured uh, experimentally. Okay? And then one of the uh, most sensitive uh, the, uh, objects for this, uh, this business is that basically you look at the electric dipole moment of the neutron. Basically, uh, this is, this is in a situation uh, this is the electric and then the magnetic dipole moment, you know, under the, you know, P over T uh, uh, transformation, uh, the, the symmetry, you know, the, 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 the Venus is then conserved and then PT is violated, basically CP is violated. So by looking at, uh, observing, uh, by measuring the electric dipole moment, you see the, how much the, the degree of the, the CP violation in the strong CP problem. Interestingly, it, you know, there has been uh, several experiments you know, to measure uh, this particular quantity, and then they, they haven't seen any, any signal so far, and they only uh, set the upper limit, which corresponds to 10 to the minus 26 electron centimeter, which, uh, equivalent, which is equivalent to the, the theta equal, theta equal less than 10 to the minus 10, which is basically, basically uh, consistent with zero. So the question is why theta is so small? This is against the, our natural uh, natural thought. This is against the naturalist problem, naturalist. Okay, because uh, the theta can be sit any any place between zero and two pi, and then we expect this is supposed to the order of one. But the major thing is, is consistent with zero. So this is called you know strong TP problem. So 1977, uh, the, the gentleman and the lady sitting over here basically has some uh, nice idea to solve this, uh, this problem by introducing new global symmetry, new one uh, symmetry with the scalar field A, which is permitted to all the universe. And the, the symmetry is supposed to be you know, is, uh, a spontaneous broken at particular uh, energy scale F A over there. And then this is, you know, the symmetry, you know, spot is broken. And then the field is the sits over there. Okay. And then, and then this, ha having this uh, formula basically cancels uh, dynamically this theta term. Okay. Uh, that's why uh, th this is a bit nice the PQ, Petri Queen, the mechanism we call it. And then right after this paper is come out and then the wheel check and and the Weinberg uh, realized that there must be you know, resulting Goldstone version uh, as a consequence of the spontaneous symmet symmetry breaking. Okay. And then they named this basically action. Okay. So the, at, at, at this time, all right, at this time, so there is no potential, uh, right? So action field doesn't feel any potential. That's why you know, it's, it's supposed to be massless. But uh, while the universe is involving and, and, and the temperatures go down, uh, uh, and then we had like in the QCD phase transition, and then the base with the, the Mexican had you know, started to tilt, and then the produce, you know, the, the, the potential wall over there, 
and then actually field is then started oscillating around this area, okay? And the oscillation basically gives the actual mass over there. So if the action, uh, actual mass is correlated uh, with, the, with the, the QCD, the scale like this, so we call this action as QCD action. However, it doesn't have to be, nowadays this is more popular and then there are many uh, experimental ideas you know, to search for this particular particle which is the action like particle, you know, it has nothing to do with the QCD scale, but you know, the other properties are pretty much similar to the action, right? Okay, the following years, you know, PQWW, okay, Pache Kim, uh, works like Weinberger's action. So we call it, you know, the standard action, okay? So they assume that, you know, the energy, uh, assume that there, there will be additional, you know, Higgs, Higgs particle, uh, Higgs, um, Higgs field, and then the symmetry, uh, the global symmetry is broken uh, electroweak scale, uh, which basically corresponds to the actual mass of the KEV range. And then they uh, right away, you know, they hook up to some, some, some experiment and did some, some uh, uh, right away did some experiment to, but, you know, they didn't see any, any signal. That's why, you know, this, this standard action was excluded pretty much right away. In the following year, 1979, uh, Chini Kim has some uh, uh, some interesting idea, and then the standard uh, <clears throat> the spontaneous symmetry breaking can be uh, can be at, uh, took place can can be take uh, take place at at a very large uh, uh, energy scale a. In other words, you know this is SSB can can occur in the very early universe. Okay. Such that you know the uh, action has a very light uh, mass, uh, and then and then we can we can basically uh, move down uh, to the mass range of the microelectron bolt, and then basically he he extended the mass range uh, from here uh, to there down to there, and by many orders of magnitude. Interestingly, in nineteen eighty three. Uh, three papers came out on the same date, and they are consistently claiming that action may account for dark matter if uh, the mass uh, mass is you know you know uh, bounded in a particular uh, <clears throat> particular constraint. Okay, here so ten to the minus six is basically uh, bounded by a, a, a cosmology. And the 10 to the minus three is basically this is the astrophysical uh, observation. So for example, you know, the uh, supernova uh, 1987 A. Okay, so there is a very nice and narrow sweet spot. Okay, in this in this region. Okay, uh, that's why this is a very very sweet spot for for uh, action action dark metal. And then many experiments are basically on this in the particular the mass range, uh, including including alpha. So action can couple to any uh, standard model uh, particles in principle, okay? So we can couple the photon uh, and then through the, you know, uh, electromagnetic interaction and then observables is basically the photon itself. And then, so we can detect them by looking at the you know, power spectrum or by simply counting the, the photon itself. Uh, so uh, the spatial gradient of action also can couple uh, to the spin of the fermion, and the basically they can induce the spin precision of the nuclei, and the, which can be censored by micro, uh, uh, magnetometer or uh, NMR techniques. And then, you know, so uh, the time bearing mm, action field uh, can also, you know, coupled with the gluon, the basically you know, it, it can in, introduce induced oscillating EDM inside the nuclei, uh, which can be, you know, still the, uh, measurable using the NMR techniques or, or, or polarimeter in the storage ring. So there are several models of uh, the action uh, depending on the, the origin of the QCD anomaly. Okay, this is inside the, you know, the standard model or outside of the standard model or you know, depending on the spontaneous peak breaking scale, okay? Uh, so it has been uh, relevant with the two Higgs and two Higgs to the singlet or the single Higgs with the singlet. 
Okay, and then this was uh, that I mentioned you know, just before, and then PQWW the standard action was uh, ruled out right away, pretty much right away. And then we have uh, two KSBG and the DFSG model is sitting there, still waiting for us uh, to be to be unveiled. So that uh, so such a strategy, the detection principle rely on the Skibi effect, Skibi effect. Okay, so basically the classical uh, electromagnetic fields is basically equivalent to the C of the bunch of photons. Okay, if there is an action existing and they interact with the, the, one of the you know, photons over there, and then uh, it will emit real photon. Okay, and then the real photon is our our observable in this case. And then this diagram is a little bit you know slightly uh, modified according to this. Okay, this is a method. There are and the main uh, three categories. The first one is a haloscope. Basically, look for the dark matter halo. Uh, you know, there's like cavity stuff and then dielectric and then the LC circuit. You know, there are a bunch of different different technology over there. ADMX, CPP, MADMX, DM radio, and then now I have to put the alpha too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the haloscope is basically some flower experiments. So basically, you know, uh, 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 searching for solar actions from the, the you know the sun's uh, uh, core. Okay, uh, so the the cast here was terminated in 2015, and then the Yaxo is taking over his business, and then and then still uh, so baby Yaxo is, is approved, and then they on under construction in in Deji, if I understand correctly. Okay, and then. In the meantime, we can also generate you know, the action at the lab and then detecting you know, those, those things at the lab too, uh, using this uh, uh, light shining through the wall experiment. And then you have you know, a pair of the magnet set and then separated by the optical, you know, the optical barrier using very strong uh, laser. Uh, and then you know, basically here, uh, the laser that the photon can interact with the magnetic field and, you know, turning to the action and then basically propagate the passing through the wall and the other side, another magnet, you know, back, going back into the photon and then here is, you know, the photon detector. So that's why you expected the light shining out of the, out of the dark, darkness, okay. The Oscar is a good one and Alps has, you know, also some, some limits and then this, this thing is, is a, you know, on the, uh, uh, upgrade using HERA, Head on magnets is very long. This is more than a hundred meter long, you know, magnets. The series of the magnet, you know, they plan to uh, the operative system and the this eel as if, if everything is goes well. Okay, so what is the dark meter? You know, different, you know, uh, PQ breaking scenarios, particularly this is in you know, a pre implantation or post implantation they predict the different mass ranges like this, okay? And then we have different in such a strategy, okay, photon coupling, uh, basically lumped elements in a heliscope or, or a helioscope. And the, for the fermion or uh, gluon coupling, we have the animal techniques where we can uh, basically look for the, the action as a, as a mediator, force mediator. Okay, here is the for physical observation too. And also it was a depending on the, uh, the detector is also depending on the, you know, uh, Compton uh, wavelengths with respect to the, uh, the detector of the, uh, the dimension of the experiment. So here's a quadricite region, okay. And then we have, you know, cavity region, uh, the small region uh, where the, the cavity uh, performs extremely well. And then at the other side, uh, the radiation region, a fairly high, high mass regions, okay. So this is the current uh, status of the action searches. Uh, this is a um, um, action to the gamma gamma coupling uh, as a as a fun uh, function of the action mass or action frequency over there. And then we have uh, two KSBD TFS the model is sitting over here. Okay. So here the light time through the wall experiment is you know, sitting over there, and then the cast sunflower experiment is it has a spending you know is quite large. And then interestingly, in you know, there are a bunch of experiments you know, focus on this area, okay, that I mentioned before. And then they are particularly using the cavity halo scope. And then it turned out to be they are very, you know, sensitive to 
our geologically interesting region. Uh, that's why CAPP also, you know, putting our efforts uh, uh, in this area, and then the Alpha will be, you know, having some some limits or if it's lucky, there's some some discoveries somewhere somewhere around there. Okay. So Heloscope, as I mentioned, is the most sensitive method in the microelectron bolt region. Okay, so so four microelectron bolt action can be can turned into the one gigahertz in photons. Uh, that's why you know uh, this is the microwave uh, photon detection. This is tech, you know, critical. So there are quite a few uh, the physical uh, quantities you are interested in. The third, uh, the first thing is conversion power. Okay, so we have you know, some theoretical parameters, couplings, and then action number density, and then the action uh, quality factors over there, and the data also the experimental parameters. So we are we we need to, in a magnetic field with large volume and then high quality factors and stuff like that. Okay. So at the end of the day, you know, the even larger and larger experiment, uh, the action, the signal power is is, is remained 10 to the minus 21. Or X is very small. Okay. Anyway. Uh, the experimental sensitivity is determined by the, the signal to noise ratio. Okay, so if you you know massage the, the Johnson Nike in the, the formula along with the the uh, uh, you know the radio radiation, you basically express uh, this uh, SNL. Uh, it's, it's like not like this term. Okay, so now the integration time and then the action bandwidth and then system noise temperatures also matter too. Okay. So, so once you combine those things, you know, okay, before that, okay. So, so the, the things in the, the experiment in you know, making, making uh, things, you know, uh, experimental difficulties that, you know, first thing is the, of course, the coupling is, is very small, very weak. The second thing is that we don't know the mass, where is the mass, okay? So basically the experiment has to tune the frequency as large as possible, okay? So, so, uh, the relevant quantity we call the scanning rate. So how fast you can scan uh, for the given given uh, uh, frequency range for given uh, 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 sensitivity, uh, given given signal to noise ratio. Okay, by combining these two quantity and the massage a little bit, you can end up with your scan rate like this. All right. So the now the P uh, is this is fourth term, and the other is quarter term. This is linear. And then the system, you know, the same temperature, so so um, squarely in, in inversely proportional to this, All right? So these these are the you know experimental parameters that we have to improve. Uh, before going into the you know uh, for the for the detail, okay, frequency tuning. So for the uh, cylindrical cavity, so basically we introduce a tuning rod you know, along the, this this axis, okay, and then the, basically you moving around. The, you know, and then you basically just towards you know, the electric field uh, over there, and then it'll it'll change the frequency. So depending on you know the material, you know, uh, having having either uh, conductor or dielectric, you can basically going up there, or you can basically go going down. Okay, typically conductor is is produces thirty percent of the scanning range, range, and then dielectric is you know, about 20 twenty percent. So. These guys, you know, you know, all together has you know uh, fifty percent in your uh, the frequency tuning range uh, with respect to the uh, central frequency. So the, another one is the form factors is also you know critical uh, the quantities here. Basically, it tells that how much the electrical field of the resonant mode of your cavity is well aligned with the external magnetic field. Okay, for example, there is a for cylindrical cavity, uh, TM01 mode in 110 mode. Okay, so it is an electric field that goes one, only one direction. This is a profile. Okay, so with the under the static magnetic field going this way, and then basically the area is the integration. Okay, the area is basically gives you the maximum maximum value for this. On the other hand, the TM110, you know, there is a only positive way and negative way. All the integral basically gives you zero. Okay, so this mode is, is not going to be sensitive to the action search. That's why you know people normally uh, normal typical cavity mode uh, for for action the heloscope. This is the this is the thing. So 
So this is a very quick summary of, of the uh, how how do we the, perform the and the cavity hairloscope, all right. So basically, what we want to do is to improve uh, this, this, this experimental parameters. So we need various you know high field and magnetic field in order to boost the action to you know photon uh, conversion weight, and then. We need also a tunable high quality resonator to enhance the resonant effect. Okay. And then, as I mentioned, the power level is 10 to the minus 21, extremely small. So we need to amplify those things, but with minimal noise edge. That's why the quantum uh, technology is involved in, a, in a quite a while. And then we also perform our experiment in a very quiet environment. Uh, nowadays, it's, it's, it's not difficult to reach down to the you know, millikelvin level. Okay, the cryogenic you know, technology is well developed. So all those all those things are relatively in in terms of the scale relatively small. That's why you know the, the actual experiment is all you know small scale experiment. I think I believe this is this is uh, you know making uh, the actual the business is more popular around the world. Okay. All right, so cavity heloscope. Okay, so so we have you know the various you know, cavity heloscope all around the world. Admax in US and Haystack in US, Fox in Europe, Organ uh, in Australia, yeah, CAPP, and in in Asia. So nowadays you know you can see that nowadays you know uh, the action business is getting more popular and popular. Okay, next time uh, I hope I I also put in you know alpha. Uh, consortium here too. The heloscope searches. Okay, so uh, here uh, this is uh, this is the only heloscope search. It's the same thing. Uh, this is coupling as a function of uh, the mass. It's like a zoom in version. Okay, this is a uh, uh, theory is over there, and then my many experimental you know, starting and then are reaching the, the theoretical interesting regions. So one interesting thing is that you know most experiments is pretty much populated in relatively low mass range. Pretty much is here is pretty much empty. Okay, this is the region is that when you go into the high frequency, okay, the cavity size has to be smaller, so which means that you have to you know, suffer from the substantial volume loss. On the other side, then the noise level is getting higher and higher. And as I mentioned, then we are heavily relying on the quantum device. The quantum device is supposed to be subject to the uh, the quantum limit, which is called the standard quantum limit, uh, which is such a such a formula, uh, which is linear to the frequency. Okay, so getting higher frequency. Okay, so the noise level is is getting getting higher, and then basically mainly because of two things is is, is a little bit challenging. Okay, uh, getting in, in, into this high frequency region. Uh, there are quite a few uh, uh, trials uh, to address these issues. Uh, okay, so first the thing is a multiple cavity system. You basically bundle multiple cavities in a cavity system, and once over here, fitting into the you know the given magnet bore. Okay, so this is yeah, this is not bad idea, but you know. Many cavities in you know, a you know, frequency matching is a critical one, and then and then you know, as the the larger number of you know, the cavities is it's going to be more much more you know, difficult to uh, for for this business. But and nonetheless, ADMX is is uh, is pursuing uh, this particular method for for their high frequency search. Okay, so CAPP uh, on the other side, the CAPP developed some other interesting design, which is called the pizza cavity. Okay, the basically here, this, you know, this single cavity, the partitions are like this, and then by looking at these things, it's pretty much like a pizza. That's why it's called it. Okay, so comparing comparing this, compared to to this is the multiple cavity system, uh, it gives us a larger volume and the simpler the simpler design. And then a couple of years ago, the uh, the design was experimentally demonstrated. Okay, so so CAPP is still pursuing this 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 design too. On the other hand, there is a, another effort to utilize the higher order mode because you know the 
um, exploring the higher order mode, basically you can you can you know increase the frequency with with enhance the quality factor without volume. Okay, this is nice. However, the problem is that there is always a negatively oscillating you know component over here. That's why the form factor is, is always you know you know it's not good. However, uh, there is some some ideas there. You know, by putting is in a very high uh, epsilon of a dielectric material like this and basically suppress this uh, negative oscillation region and then basically you can recover the, the form factor and then now you can start in you know, the play the game okay so there, there, as I mentioned there is, there is a nice idea out there but still this uh, this idea is still limited to up to the 10 gigahertz I would say okay so we need beyond that so the even higher frequency approaches. Okay, so we wanna wanna get into the radiation, radi uh, radiation region. Okay, like this. Okay, so people are started in thinking about you know some periodic structure, either either dielectric plane or the conducting wire over here. Okay, so so originally uh, the ADMX Orpheus experiment in you know, thinking about those things. Okay, so here is an you know, action in this the you know electric field. Okay, but you know, looking at this, you know, you can expect that in a, a, in a, a form factor is zero. But as I mentioned earlier, okay, you can basically put, you know, this is the periodic a dielectric material over there, and then you can basically non vanishing uh, uh, the form factor you get. Okay, here, and then this is a little bit different in the periodic structure of the dilative, but the concept is a little bit different. different. I'll, I'll talk, it, uh, talk about this next slide. And then this is basically in, in, uh, the basis of the, you know, uh, the Mad Max concept, uh, which required a lot of effort for this. Okay, at the, at the end, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, there was a very nice idea about in a plasma heliscope, you put, you know, the, uh, the conducting wires is around the basically uh, this is can be treated as a as a wire metal material okay so that's why you have very flat you know electric field you know it can be generated which basically enhance the you know form factor choose all right and then uh, alpha consortium is basically following this concept and then trying to you know uh, to set up the experiment uh, <clears throat> nowadays okay and then the, the bottom line of, of, of this thing is the such frequency determined by the interspace of the of the base material, so like this, okay? So which means, you know, <clears throat> the such frequency is independent of the detector size, and then we can, we can basically enhance the, the volume at high frequencies. So that's why it is suitable for the post inflation beyond the 10 gigahertz. So Mad Max, all right, so here is an idea. Okay, so the vacuum, basically you introduce uh, some dielectric material in here and then there's a discontinuous, you know, introduced, okay? And then basically because it is discontinuous, uh, in order to compensate it for loss and that there must be uh, the propagating waves have to be generated, propagating uh, perpendicularly to the, to, to the in, in, interface like this, okay? So basically you every single, uh, dielectric, uh, there is like a propagating uh, uh, a wave, so it is formed and basically by utilizing construction interference of those two things and the reflection from the rear. And at the end of the day, yeah, you will see very enhanced, very boosted uh, uh, signal power, uh, which is which can be uh, picked up by, by the antenna. Okay, again, this is a Post scenario, <clears throat> post influence scenario, suitable uh, experiments. And then full scale experiments basically plan to utilize a two meter diameter and a 10 Tesla, okay, dipole, uh, which, which cost a lot of money. It's not been approved yet, but you know, they are still, still, still in proposal stadium. And then uh, they plan to, you know, 80 one square meter discs with very high. Uh, the epsilon <clears throat> uh, dielectric discs that they plan to. And in the meantime, uh, they did some very nice, you know, uh, proof concept of demonstration. And then they also performed the 3D effect too. And then uh, 
they inform us that you know they <clears throat> uh, do some some uh, prototype experiment uh, which consists of twenty discs in thirty centimeter diameter like you know, shown is like this, and then they plan to use one of the available magnet as shown. Uh, it's a large board, even though this is a one point six you know, six Tesla, and then but you know this is good enough to, for for prototype experiment. Okay, finally, Alpa. Okay, Alpa is, is, as I mentioned, this is a very nice idea. So basically, they wanted to use and uh, utilize the resonance with the plasma frequency of electrons in, in, in wires, in the, in the conductor wires. Okay, so basically, the, uh, <clears throat> the plasma frequency is basically determined by the geometric factor. The A is the basically, uh, the R is the size of the wire. And age the basically space in between. Okay. So basically, this is an array of wire, and then it can be treated as a meta material. And then basically, the whole thing is can be treated as a bulk plasma is moving around like that. Okay. So <clears throat> again, this uh, frequency uh, independent of the detector size and suitable for high frequency searches. All right. So recently, they did it, they performed the in depth study. Okay. Uh, like this, and then they published and uh, recently published to the PLB, and then uh, which is very nice. And then they also uh, the different different separate group also demonstrated the tuning things uh, by varying the distance uh, of the wire array in in one dimensional way. And then they also de uh, demonstrate those things so nicely. And then uh, if I understand correctly, uh, the the Alpha Consortium is 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 planned to. Uh, plan to you know you know uh, started the DAQ for for the for physics and scientific run in 2026, and then this is the basically their expected uh, projection. Okay, uh, like this. So okay, so let me let me move to to our stuff. Okay, so basically our uh, metamaterial dielectric array. Uh, the heloscope, the start has to start with the, with the uh, plasma heloscope, okay? So here, so we have array of wires, okay? Typical, this is it's pretty much in the uh, plasma heloscope, okay? So in terms of, you know, uh, uh, form factor, quality factor, number of density, and then I, this is my, you know, uh, <clears throat> personal view over here. And then we did some some quick simulation. Uh, we have like a very nice, uh, well well defined the boundary. Uh, we had to put it as much material as possible. Okay, so the copper wires. Uh, the simulation said that in a very high uh, form factor, uh, but in, you know the quality factor is, is remained the ten to the three uh, level, and then and then the number of density is three wires per, per uh, square centimeters. And then from my point of view, uh, this so dealing with a large number of the wires might be challenging in, in construction and then even you know, thinking about the tuning mechanism. But it, 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 this is my uh, originally, originally, initially my my concern. That's why we moved to uh, the post rather than wire in order to basically in order to re uh, reduce the the number density first, and then there is a hoping you know. A little bit improvement in the quality factor, and it turns out to be true. And then the bone factor is remained pretty much the same. Okay, so that's why you know uh, I I we we thought that this is you know less challenging. We thought that okay less challenging than uh, the or original version. And later uh, we had some idea, and then why not we replace you know copper poster with the, you know dielectric rod over there uh, like this. Okay, so as I will tell you you know next slide. And that then because there is a you know the negative loss rate to you know component and all is still that's why form factor is not good. However, uh, because of the, the metallic properties is you know enhance the quality factor substantially, and then, then we also you know maintain that those things, uh, the number density is pretty much lower level. And then because you know we are dealing with in a dielectric material, we thought that this is a more more viable uh, in, in in construction and in the tuning. Uh, frequency tuning system. Okay, so basically, uh, this is a, what first of all, you know, we we basically constructed a, you know, a prototype uh, 
of the cavity for array of wires. And then, and then we also have this thing, uh, array of metal posted, and then we have fun with this. And then for the rest of the slide, this is going to be about the array of dielectric rods. Okay, so performance test was done. Ah, this, uh, okay, so let me let me let me just go 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 quick. There is a question in the okay. okay, okay. There is a question in the chat from Alexis Lomazanyuk, probably uh, to the previous slide. The question yeah. is in this simulation for the electric wires, what was the level of uh, losses? Okay. So level of hold on. Okay, so uh, let me let me let me let me give you the uh, let me give you the uh, um, uh, electrical electric conductivity and the tangent loss. Electrical conductivity uh, we assume low temperature electrical conductivity, and then uh, the loss tangent I think we assumed ten to the minus six or something. Of the dielectric material. So, yeah, I I, I hope this did this answer to 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 the questions. So I will I will I will come up with it a little bit more. So basically, uh, we we did this, you know the uh, performance study first of all uh, to the okay, okay thanks. Uh, to the event, to the event in a way. Basically, we can we can model the, the metamaterial uh, structure. Okay, sorry about that. By considering uh, this uh, unicells like this, okay, unicells with the base material in, in the at the at the center, and the basically you you span the you repeat those things in an in infinitely, and the, with the, the you know boundary uh, in a periodic boundary condition on these wedges. And then basically you can spend those things, and then basically by analyzing, you know, sing, single unit cell, you can basically uh, you can get some idea what the, you know the you know performance of the metal material. Okay, uh, for, uh, for example, num number density, uh, our thing is targeting at ten gigahertz. If this is a ten to one, twenty gigahertz, is five to one. You know, dielectric is much lesser. Okay, resonant mode. Uh, the, the wires is, is pretty much like you know you know generally oscillating you know, at at once you know, all together. It's pretty much like in a TM zero one zero mode like okay. However, the dielectric is always you know the constraint in the field inside there is always you know, negatively constraining, negatively uh, oscillating component inside of the mag you know, inside of the rod. Uh, that's why you know uh, it's it's, it's uh, it introduced uh, it, it generated less you know the form factor. In general, you know, there's you know the quality factor is so like this, and it's strongly dependent on the electrical conductivity sigma, and then and loss tangent, something like that. Okay, so particularly we assume, okay, this is low temperature of the copper, uh, uh, the electrical conductivity, and the epsilon ten and ten to the minus six, and this is what we get. Okay, here is the blue, this is the quality factor, and then the green is the, the form factor over there, as I mentioned. Uh, uh, okay, so for, uh, quality factor is, is much, much higher than this one. However, uh, sorry. so form factor, okay, so wire uh, dielectric always suffers because, because of negative oscillating uh, component. Nonetheless, because of the, the quality factor is large enough for overall uh, you know, performance, you know, which is represented in the C squared Q, is basically uh, here. Up, up there, okay. So by looking at this, and we we pretty much you know see that you know uh, our design is, is highly profitable, particularly in in high upper octave band uh, in this region, okay. So if you wonder some 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 numbers, okay. So we defined some figure of merit, uh, which is basically integration uh, of of this C squared Q curves uh, below this this area. Uh, uh, this is this is our figure of merit. Okay, the for uh, for dielectric array is ten to the minus about the ten to the six, and then it is minus ten ten to the four. Okay, so two orders of magnitude higher. But this is all the uh, two di two dimensional the things in the basically ideal. Okay, so because of this, we also perform the three dimensional 
uh, uh, study, okay, performance comparison, okay, because it is just going to be more realistic, uh, okay, really more, more realistic, okay. So basically, we use the same dimension of the uh, conducting cavity as you, uh, our part consortium has, you know, has, you know, demonstrated their, their idea, okay, 10 by 10 by 10 uh, cubic centimeter. Okay, this is a wire <clears throat> metamaterial, as is this R part, 10 by 10, a way of one millimeter wires. And then, okay, and then we have dielectric rods, okay, which consists of six by six array. And then each, each uh, array of rod, each rod has 7.45 millimeter uh, diameter. And you also consider a multiple cell pizza cavity, okay, which has 16 partitions in there. All right, so frequency is, is pretty much the same, and the volume is, is a, this thing, okay? So there is a small, you know, uh, degradation because of the, the conductor, okay? The bone factor is pretty much larger, and in a, in a dielectric, it's, it's a fairly low, and then this is decent. However, the quality factor uh, is, is a 2,000, okay? This is a factor, you know, you know orders of magnitude higher, and then this is decent. By the way, here, uh, we assume that conductivity as a room temperature uh, of brass because because we we want to compare this our performance uh, with the R pass you know demonstration because by R pass you know assume that the brass thing okay so and then and then you also assume the uh, low content of commercially available dielectric material uh, aluminum material which is uh, ten to the minus four. Uh, Los Angeles is 10 to the minus four, uh, which is a, is a typical value for, for this, okay? And then we also uh, repeat this, repeat this, you know, those, those, those things uh, for different sigmas and different loss tangents. And then well, we also look at them, you know, one, one particular, you know, uh, uh, frequency uh, things. Uh, and then uh, here, figure out is, you know, uh, B squared C squared Q, okay? Here is, the, here is the number, all right? So uh, basically, uh, the, in, in general, dielectric uh, rod is introduced, you know, having a little little higher. So I think this number is just a little bit. Okay, uh, I, I probably double checked it, but you know, I think it, it, this, this last, last one is, is, is the correct one. So, so anyway, uh, our dielectric rod, you know, uh, design uh, is, is a little bit uh, factor of, you know, factor of four or five is, 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 is better than uh, the wire wire metamaterial. Uh, this, this is only for uh, simulation study, okay? Uh, and later on, we have some, some demo demonstration, real demonstration results too, okay? So, so okay, so, so far it's so good. Okay, this, you know this is only performance. Now the real matter is how we how we want to tune the frequency itself. Okay, as a, even though the alpha alpha demonstrated in you know, a frequency uh, tuning mechanism uh, using one dimensional way. Okay, which is a very nice one. But you know ideally, uh, uh, okay, I mean, you know, ideally we want a two dimensional you know isotropic expansion or contraction at the same time, something like that. Okay. So, so the idea is we came up uh, the, the inspired by the, the kirigami. Kirigami, uh, kirigami is the basically we, we know the origami is, is the folding papers and there's, there's some 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 paper art is folding associated folding or something like that. But kirigami also is having some some cutting the paper or something. Okay, right? so the kirigami using those kirigami there is some for nice you know papers out there and then you know nice and uh, the tessellation, as you know, how you know, tiling those things, you know, in the, the particular, you know, design and the very nice one, you know, those things, okay. It was, uh, it was a published in Nature Material, in some, you know, a few years ago. And then there is uh, some, some uh, demonstration, you know, using the, those things, how, how do those things, expansion and plunging and something like that, okay. And then later on, you also find another, another paper, which is described here. And then this is basically a uh, rotating square, okay? Something like that, okay? And uh, there is a connection point, the particular connection point by, and, and then they, they're rotating one, one in, a, in a particular way. They're basically expanding in expansion or, or, or contracting those things together. 
So based on this, uh, we have some ideas and then, aha, uh -huh, it can be, you know, expand or flexible or like this and using squares or, or, or hexagons and something like that, all right? So this is, this is how we start with the, with the develop our, our tuning system. Okay, so the square is the simple one. So that's why we, we consider first time, you know, the, you know rotating square. Uh, the regular tessellation is like this, okay? And the first thing is the simplest one is three by three array, okay? It's corner in here and here and then hinge each other and then the basically rotating of the center block in a counter a clockwise, basically expansion, expanding the structure itself and then they're going and the uh, that count clock wide rotating based on extraction, those things, all right? So basically in the middle of the, those things, and then we have, you know, uh, attached to the, our uh, uh, direct material like this, okay? So this is contracted one and this is expanded one, all right? So this is a simulation study, okay? This is in a cavity boundary, and then we have three by three, uh, those things in the expanding, and then you also see the, how they let the field in the berries, and then how the, the, the frequency itself is varies or something like that, which is pretty nice. Okay. All right, so demonstration basically, we fabricated the prototype cavity. So we have, you know, the copper cylinder and the three by three away alumina rod, 99.7% high quality one. And then basically, uh, this one, uh, the, the tuning structure is made of. Uh, the peak, the plastic uh, material, and then basically this is formed uh, the final uh, skeleton of the, our our prototype, and then and you see uh, this is you know a copper structure within you know in, inside that you know we have uh, aluminum rod, and then and then we have you know a tuning structures on top of it, and basically the center part is you know attached to to the 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 pH rotator. Okay, so that's why you can you can basically rotate those things. And then if you if you look at it very very closely enough, right? So while expanding or distraction, the rod basically moving in only only radiational way, radiational way, something like that. Okay, so that's why uh, uh, the the end cap is we have like a slot like this. Okay, and the basically you can guide. It while you're turning the, the piezo uh, and then the, while, while you're turning, uh, rotating the center block uh, of, of your tuning system, you can basically guide the movement of uh, the dielectric material or uh, you, know, you know, the radiational way or something like that, okay? Uh, this, this is the way we did. All right, so, and then we put, uh, uh, we, we brought this thing into four Kelvin uh, environment. And then this is our measurement. Okay, this is the frequency, uh, frequency, uh, frequency map. Okay, so basically you will see three, you know, three nice curves uh, like this. Okay, so our uh, desired mode is correspond to you know uh, this one, the lowest one, uh, which has a very good consistency with the with the simulation study, which is referring to the you know the red dots. And then we also have higher mode. Uh, those things, and then we we see that very nicely tuning, and then they're consistent with the simulation study, and then we also measure the quality factor of those things, and then and then here uh, the the Zion is is basically correspond to the measurement in a nitrogen uh, nitrogen liquid nitrogen environment, and then the uh, blue uh, is is correspond to the bokeh measurement basically, and then. Uh, there are uh, three, three other things in the basically coming from the, the simulation. Uh, this is the dotted one is basically infinity in, 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 infinite in a periodic in a structure, which I showed you in, in, in two dimensional study. And then here we, we get down uh, to the two dimensional and the three dimensional is, is, you know, that one. And then from our measurement, we were able to estimate uh, uh, the lost tangent because then the sigma is the well known, the, the conductivity uh, of the copper is the well known. Okay, and then and then uh, we were basically uh, uh, were able to extract the, uh, the lost tangent of our dielectric material, which is the five times ten to the minus six, which is very you know, very <clears throat> the decent value for the commercially available uh, uh, 
alumina. Okay, so okay. Anyway, the quality uh, maximum quality max, uh, has is you know more more than uh, more than two hundred k. And then there was a, a, another interesting uh, stuff was observed. Okay, so we basically applied in a magnetic field at four Kelvin, and then there is some in the in it, this is a quality factor, and then there is some weird structure, and then going back up there, and then and then the last unit you know, remained in a little bit higher than this value. There's a five percent increase, and then basically this can be and understand by the you know by applying the magnetic field or the lowering the temperature, uh, very low temperature, and then your, your spin is aligned well enough. That's why you know, you lost tendency and it goes down. And then this was observed by other Fox experiments too, okay? So if you're interested, yeah, you will do that too. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Samu, there is a question in the chat. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. what is shown in the 2D plot as a color? Yeah, here. here basically 2D is this one, the dotted one. No, 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 the, the first the first frequency over rotation angle. What is shown as a color? This one? Yes. Uh this is this is actually measurement, and then this one corresponds to uh the 3D, 3D. I'm sorry, yeah. This simulation is the 3D, and then we didn't we didn't have any we, we don't have any 2D stuff because you know. This one is we have to compare the realistic design. Oh, the question is what is the quantity? What yes. quantity is plotted here? Yes. So from experiment, you can get S1 or ah. or something like that. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Quantity over here. Okay. Uh, all right. So the sigma, the, the, the conductivity is like a uh, copper conductivity at low temperature. So basically, this is correct. Let me let me go back to here. Oh. Okay. Okay, so let me, let me, let me. So here, this is a quantity of the, you know, basically copper at room temperature. This is a, this is a quantity of the low standard of alumina at room temperature. And this is low temperature we expected. And this, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mention this. And this one, we assume that uh, the superconductive cavity and then the very, very uh, high, uh, high quality of the dielectric material. So in realistic, this is this is what we see. Probably this is this is this is this is going to what what we said at the present um, state. And then and then we also yeah assume for this simulation study we also assume uh, the sigma is is you know ten, ten, uh, the um, top of conductivity at low temperature. And then we could assume this is 10 to the minus six, but we have measurement of the quality factor because the low standard is, is it has a very un large uncertainty. We actually fit those things into our, our data. And, and then this is the number we, we obtained by fitting, uh, fitting in a simulation into, into to, to our, our data. And then, The calling the temperature of the chip. Yeah, yeah. So, so sorry for that. We yeah, still, yeah, yeah. still That's do right. not understand. Yeah, there is uh -huh. yellow color, there is a green color. So probably these are different numbers. And we do not understand uh, what are the numbers and how we will measure it. Is it S11 parameter for resonator or something else? Right so at this figure. Uh, okay. What is all right? Sorry, sorry, sorry. This this is a S two one. This this is transmission. Okay, and transmission. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. This is a very basically transmission at 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 four Kelvin. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This 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 is a thing. Right. Okay, so this, this frame is a summary. The action is well motivated element particle. Okay, we addressed in the two fundamental questions. And then we note uh, the heloscope is the most sensitive method, particularly in the microwave region. And then the, there are a lot of approaches going on, including alpha, uh, high frequency approaches out there, particularly uh, uh, periodic structure of the 
conductor in the dielectric material. Okay, so CFPP recently uh, proposed you know, a pro uh, tunable dielectric material uh, heloscope, uh, and then we did some 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 yeah uh, demonstration results in show there. We are uh, we are sharing with you guys. All right, so thank you very much for this. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for the very uh, interesting talk. So, dear colleagues, do you have any questions to the speaker? I see uh, one raised hands from Pavel Bulov. Pavel? Kira, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Pavel. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for brilliant talk. I really liked it. Um, I have maybe a little bit stupid question. Uh, you was showing us uh, the field profiles always in 2D at very beginning, like a two dimensional profiles uh, of the field, yeah, in the cavity, uh, uh -huh. your electric cavity. But in reality, this is three dimensional cavity. Yes, sir, yes, yes. Sir. And there is an axis of the rod and the field uh -huh. may vary along the axis. So uh -huh. you ensure that the field is uniform along say X mm -hmm. direction and Y direction. What about uh -huh. Z direction? Have you performed uh, numerical simulations of some measurements? Because this is cavity mm -hmm. with complex dielectrics inside, and it makes yes, many, many, many different modes. Yeah. Yes. And two D sure. uh, cavity uh, modes may not uh -huh. respond to three D cavity modes. Sure. Yeah. That 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 is that is a good point. So <clears throat> so. Realistically, okay. Realistically, this is this is all. You know, even even our our uh, simulation is. Wait, uh, what is it? yeah? Even 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 our sim, uh, simulation uh, using uh, construct uh, sim simulated three three dimensional three dimensional things. You know, implementing the uh, our actual actual design. Okay, so here is a, here is the thing. All right. So uh, probably it's going to be better okay, in, in, in terms of the you know, quality factor. So we basically expect, uh, so this is a, this, this kind of shape, pretty much things. And then as you can mention, the, there is a, is a you know, dips over there, okay? So this, this thing basically, we believe that this is basically introduced by a misalignment and, and then this is non-ideal, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, fabrication or something like that. So I I would say that this is really difficult to avoid this, you know, right? So we have to we have to live with this probably. Yeah. Unless you know we have we have this very nice you know alignment, you know, al 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 you know, unless you have you have a very nice alignment or very nice fabrication our our system itself okay. so but it, this is a very very first version of the prototype and then and then we did not that much care about things and our our major thing is so whether or not, whether or not this is a tuning is is a capable of itself and that's why you know showing this thing is a four hours you know, at this at this moment is going to be enough and the next level is as you mentioned the you know that we have to uh, improve the alignment itself and too. And then I, I, I agree with you, even, even you know, dielectric material, uh, dealing with the dielectric material requires a lot of effort and very precision things, you know. I agree with you, yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you, it's clear, yeah. Mm -hmm. Last time? Yeah, uh, so uh, I have a follow-up question to Pablo, essentially. Um, I'm worried about mode mixing because yeah. if you look at your uh, uh, plot in white and green, the lowest mode that you simulated with mm -hmm. red dots, uh, mm -hmm. for instance, between the first two points, between I think the third and the, no, uh, the fourth and the fifth, you can see this lowest mode uh, having an avoided crossing with some other mode. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did you in some way estimate how that would affect the, uh, you know? Yes, yes, yes. So I, I think this is relevant to the publisher's question too. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It, so when, 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 when we do this in you know, a simulation study, the, we, we did it very close, closely. Okay. So basically, if you, I don't have that plot. If you look at, you look at the uh, form factor, it has, 
it has two very big dips over there, which is consistent with our, our measurements. And then this is based on the very calls, uh, the, <clears throat> the simulation study. And then later on, we measurement this, so those things, you know, looks like this is also in the mode crossing too, right? So we, we, we actually performed a very fine simulation study too. And then we saw, you know, quite a few, you know, mode crossings is here and there too. And I believe this is the evidence for that. So anyway, anyway, okay. So as I mentioned, you know, uh, the mode crossing because you know our our mode itself is pretty much higher mode. Okay, there must be in a higher you know the the mode density is very very high. You know that 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 that, that is for sure. Uh, but I think you know uh, we cannot avoid that the, the mode crossing itself. But uh, I think we can avoid. It. Uh, the on on uh, reduce avoid the uh, I, uh, let's say I can reduce the uh, the unusable. So for example, uh, this is a, this is a fairly much larger than we expected. We even even we see in the simulation very sharp. The mode mode missing region is very sharp, but we actually see for example fairly large. Okay. So this, I believe this is coming from the misalignment of those things. Okay. The mode, mode crossing itself, we cannot avoid, but we can reduce it, the mode crossing regions by, you know, precise, more precise align those things. Is it, is this, is it enough to, to answer to you? Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah so. um, also a follow up question to that. Mm -hmm. is uh, could you clear up how did you position your probes your antennas in the experiment uh, uh, so we antenna over there so here it's so a very weakly one side here and the other side there okay so very weakly coupled ah, yeah so so we're at the edges of uh top yes top. yes 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 i see yes okay okay so we don't we don't wanna we don't wanna because i think yeah Fairly like this is around here. You know, so basically, the 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 field field variation is, is not significant. So, you know, we we don't want to bot, you know disturb the field distribution. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Also, another thing, if you're not mm -hmm. pressed for time, uh, sure. so you mentioned in the paper that you added these metallic rods to the edges. Uh, ah, yeah. I think yes. I, I yes, think you you went over that. I wanted to yeah. ask you how important that is and how it affects the scaling, because the basic structure, the you know, Kirigami uh, uh -huh. way of tuning, uh, it seems to be scalable further from three or by three to you know, uh, bigger volumes. Uh, how the, does this uh, necessity to add this metallic rod? Uh, these metallic uh, I see. I see. Bit? So, so, so far, uh, what we have done so far is that this is a, this is a three by three, uh, three by three array within the circular, circular cylindrical cavity. Okay. So, so we need the eight posts over here. And then we extend those to the five by five. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, and there are also eight. I don't know correctly. Eight eight posts is something around. So, so the size of the post doesn't doesn't vary that much. Okay, the 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 uh the number of number of things is is it, you know, I don't think it's it dramatically changes. So basically, you expand those things. You know, uh, probably it will it will it will not affect that much. You know, getting uh uh later on is 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 the 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 effect of the, the in the copper is it's getting smaller and smaller, so it's it's I, we don't you don't you don't worry about you know, those things that much. Yeah. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all for me. Thank you very much. So do you have any other questions? Maybe maybe one last question. Yes. Sure. Know. Sure. Please. Uh, uh, please, please. Again about these metallic uh, rods which you have. Mm -hmm. Do they significantly affect the mode structure? Um, it is. 
Okay, so basically it's like a free components. It's cavity yeah. plus uh, metallic rods plus the electric, yeah? That's right. So, okay, because, so. Because, because, because this is a circular one. So if, if it's a square one, we don't need that. But because it's a circular one, you know, there is always, uh, right? So here and here and here, you know, field that just simply populate over there. This is really hard to, to form our desired mode, yeah. Okay, okay, I see, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to clarify, yes, yes. So if you use the hexagonal structure you had on one of the previous slides, uh, you you theoretically wouldn't need wouldn't need the same rods. Yeah, uh, bottom right. Mm. Or like, would we need for the rods be less? Uh, I'm. We we did a study, but I'm not sure how many posts. I'm I'm not sure whether or not we we introduced posts and how many if if we we did and how many posts we introduced. Uh, uh, if we did, probably probably two of them. We if, if we had to probably two of them over here, two of them, two of them, maybe twelve, but it's a small size. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's still some space left. Yeah. Which you need to account. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, is there uh, no any other questions? So, I would like to thank you, thank our speaker again from all of us. Yeah. So, hope to see you. Maybe see you again. The next okay. Seminar. Next, next seminar. On, on <laughs> I pro 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 so, probably yeah. Yeah, probably CAPP will probably invite one of you guys you know, for, for, for our seminar. Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and tour, so usually we, every year we perform, like, we provide the conference Metanana somewhere in Russia. So hopefully, one, oh. one day. When, when, when is it? Uh, the conference Metanana. So, it's, uh, it's yeah. planned next year to be in Armenia. Yes. So, we will send you an invitation. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then, anyway, let, 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 let us keep in touch because you know we, we need to show our, our ideas and stuff like that. All right. So, Definitely. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye for everyone. See you Bye. next Bye. Monday on the our weekly micro Goodbye. Okay. Bye.